energy. We now know that to do any kind of work we need energy. We must have energy to accomplish work. But the question is where does this energy come from? The sun is the biggest natural source of energy to us. Many of our energy sources are derived from the sun. Energy resources are classified into two groups. Non-renewable and renewable. Most of our energy comes from non-renewable energy sources. Coal Petroleum Natural gas Propane and uranium are non-renewable energy sources. They are used to make electricity, to heat our homes, to move our cars and to manufacture all kinds of products. These energy sources are called non-renewable because their supplies are limited. Renewable energy sources include biomass, geothermal energy, hydropower, solar energy and wind energy. They are called renewable energy sources because they are replenished in a short time. We use renewable energy sources mainly to make electricity. An object having a capability to do work is said to possess energy. The object which does the work loses energy and the object on which the work is done gains energy. The energy possessed by an object is thus measured in terms of its capacity of doing work. The unit of energy is therefore the same as that of work that is joule J. 1 J is the energy required to do 1 joule of work. Sometimes a larger unit of energy called kilojoule Kj is used. 1 kilojoule equals 1000 joules. Types of energy There are many different forms of energies. These various forms include Potential energy Kinetic energy Heat energy Chemical energy Electrical energy And light energy Kinetic energy Let us study about kinetic energy. We know that a moving object can do work and an object moving faster can do more work than an identical object moving relatively slow. Kinetic energy is the energy possessed by an object due to its motion. The kinetic energy of an object increases with its speed. Turning wheel Moving car Boy running are the examples of kinetic energy. So we say that the kinetic energy of a body moving with a certain velocity is equal to the work done on it to make it acquire that velocity. Expression for Kinetic Energy Let us now express the kinetic energy of an object in the form of an equation. Consider an object of mass m moving with a uniform velocity u. Let it now be displaced through a distance s when a constant force F acts on it in the direction of its displacement. 
we know that the work done w is fs the work done on the object will cause a change in its velocity let its velocity change from u to v let a be the acceleration produced the relation connecting the initial velocity u and the final velocity v of an object moving with a uniform acceleration a and the displacement s is v square minus u square is equal to 2as this gives s is equal to v square minus u square upon 2a we know that f is equal to ma so by using the values of f and s in the equation of work we get w is equal to ma into v square minus u square upon 2a or we can write it as w is equal to 1 upon 2m into v square minus u square if the object is starting from its stationary position that is u is equal to 0 then work done w is equal to 1 upon 2 mv square it is clear that the work done is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of an object. Thus, the kinetic energy possessed by an object of mass m and moving with a uniform velocity v is e k is equal to 1 upon 2 m v square. Potential energy Dear students, the capacity to do work is called energy. Potential energy is the energy of an object or a system due to the position of the body or the arrangement of the particles of the system. To understand potential energy, let's do an activity. Take a rubber band, hold it at one end and pull from the other. You will see that the band stretches. Now release the band at one of the ends. What do you see? The band will tend to regain its normal length. This means that the band had acquired energy in its stretched position. Do you know how did it acquire energy when stretched? Here, the energy gets stored due to the work done on the object. The energy transferred to an object is stored as potential energy. If it is not used to cause a change in the velocity or speed of the object. We transfer energy when we stretch a rubber band. The energy transferred to the band is its potential energy. The potential energy possessed by the object is the energy present in it by virtue of its position or configuration. Gravitational potential energy is the energy stored in an object as the result of its vertical position or height. Let's find out the expression for the gravitational potential energy of an object at a height. Consider an object of mass m. Let it be raised through a height h from the ground. A force is required to do this. The minimum force required to raise the object is equal to the weight of the object mg. The object gains energy equal to the work done on it. Let the work done on the object against gravity be W. That is, work done W is equal to force into displacement which is equal to mg into h is equal to mgh. Since work done on the object is equal to mgh, an energy equal to mgh units is gained by the object. This is the potential energy of the object.
Ep is equal to mgh. Also, the work done by gravity depends on the difference in vertical heights of the initial and final positions of the object and not on the path along which the object is moved. Conservation of Energy Part 1 and Part 2 We know that the form of energy can be changed from one form to another. Whenever energy gets transformed, the total energy remains unchanged. This is the law of conservation of energy. According to this law, energy can only be converted from one form to another. It can neither be created nor be destroyed. The total energy before and after the transformation remains the same. Let us consider a simple example. Let an object of mass m be made to fall freely from a height h. At the start, the potential energy is mgh and kinetic energy is zero. Why is the kinetic energy zero? It is zero because its velocity is zero. The total energy of the object is thus mgh. As it falls, its potential energy will change into kinetic energy. If V is the velocity of the object at a given instant, the kinetic energy would be 1 upon 2 mv square. As the fall of the object continues, the potential energy would decrease while the kinetic energy would increase. When the object is about to reach the ground, h is equal to 0 and V will be the highest. Therefore, the kinetic energy would be the largest and potential energy the least. However, the sum of the potential energy and kinetic energy of the object would be the same at all points. That is, potential energy plus kinetic energy is equal to constant or mgh plus 1 upon 2 mv square is equal to constant. The sum of kinetic energy and potential energy of an object is its total mechanical energy. We find that during the free fall of the object, the decrease in potential energy at any point in its path appears as an equal amount of increase in kinetic energy. There is thus a continual transformation of gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy.